Welcome back to YouTube. We have Ahmed again from in-depth tech reviews and here is Google Apps updates roundup number 13 and in this video I'm going to show you all the new changes I spotted in the second and the third weeks of February. In this episode there are some cool and exciting features so let's see what's new with Google Apps but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Let's start with YouTube. And now if you are using a phone with a 1080p display like the Pixel 5 I have here, you still can choose the 2160 and the 1440p resolutions in the video settings. And the video is playing nicely. So as you see here, I'm on the 2160 and I still can play the video without any issues. But you might wonder why would I need to choose 2160 or 1440p on a phone with a 1080p resolution because technically the display is still 1080p. I found in reality the videos become a little bit sharper when you do this. So here is a side by side comparison. I took a screenshot on the 1080p on the left and another screenshot at 2160 on the right to show you the difference. So I'm going to put the phone in landscape mode and zoom all the way in. I'm not sure if you can clearly see that on camera but the text on the right is definitely sharper than the one on the left. So I recommend trying it in reality to clearly see the difference. So in a nutshell, this new feature will simply decrease the compression on the video and that's why it appears to be a little bit sharper, but technically you still see the video in the same resolution as your phone's display. Anyhow, as far as this feature will help us increase the video quality, so it's a welcomed addition. Next, the Play Store. And recently Google added a really cool feature which is the ability to share apps from your phone with others or the other way around. And to get access to this feature, go to My Apps and Games and then you will find a new tab here called share. Going to share will show you two buttons, one is called send and the other called receive. When you tap on any of them, it will ask you for the location access for the first time, and then you will see the full list of apps that you can share with others. But there are definitely some limitations here. First, the native apps like Google Camera, the phone app, the messages app, they are not showing on the list as you see here. All these apps are not showing. I can only see the free apps I downloaded from the Google Play Store. Also, the paid apps and games will not show up here, which makes sense. But let me show you how it works side by side. Before jumping to the next category, let's give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, cdkoffers.com. From CDK Offers, you can purchase original Microsoft Windows 10 and Office keys in a very discounted price. Not only this, but you can also use my special promo code ID20 to get extra 20% discount. As you see, you can get yourself a Windows 10 OEM key for $16.18, which is insanely cheap. Please check the links in the description below. Now let's get back to the review. In this part, I'm going to show you how the feature works step by step and also give you some tips based on my usage. First of all, this feature is not exclusive to Pixel phones. As you see here, I'm going to show it to you on the Poco M3, which is using Android version 10. It's not even using the latest version. Based on my research, this feature will be available on any Android phone that supports the nearby share feature. And that's the case with my Poco M3. So let's start sending some apps to see how the feature works. So my Pixel 5 is ready and now I'm going to go to the Poco M3. I have the send and receive buttons. So I'm going to send an app from the Pixel 5 to the Poco M3. I'm going to tap send over here and receive on the other phone. Then I'm going to choose one of the apps that I don't have on the other phone, which is Facebook, for example. And I'm going to also try to transfer a big game like, let's say, Asphalt 9. Here you go. And I'm going to tap on send. As you see here, my Poco M3 started to appear immediately. When I tap on it, on the other side, it will show me a pin code that should match the one I have on my Pixel 5. And then I can continue installing the apps by tapping on receive on the recipient phone. At this point, you might wonder, is it going to transfer your Facebook data to the other phone? And the answer is no. It will only transfer the APK, either it's an app or a game. And this feature will be very useful in a lot of scenarios. First of all, if you have a limited data bundle, you can ask your friends to send you the apps that way and you save your data allowance. Or if you are in a family, one of you can download the app and then share it with others and so on and so forth. Back to the steps and as you see here, the Facebook and the Asphalt 9 got transferred to the Poco M3, but there is only one problem. Asphalt 9 size is only 104 megabytes, 
but the actual size of the game on my Pixel 5 is 2.3 gigabytes. And that's because Asphalt 9 APK doesn't include the full game data. After installing the APK and open the game for the first time, it will ask you to download an extra 1.9 gigabytes. So with games like Asphalt 9, it's not gonna save you that much of data. As you see, I only saved 104 megabytes. But with games and apps that are fully included in the APK, it will be a lot more useful, which is the case with the Facebook application. So now after successfully transferring all the apps and games, I have here a button called install all. I can tap on it to install both apps at once or I can install them individually, whatever I want. Plus I have here also a disconnect button, which means there is an active session between the two phones at the moment. And because of this, I can send more apps without disconnecting from the other phone. So if I want to send more, I can tap on send more apps, get the list one more time and start sending again or I can switch places. I can make this phone the sender and this phone the recipient by tapping on send apps on the other phone. And let's pick one of the apps over here and tap on send. And the session started immediately and the APK is transferring. One final thing you need to do before quitting the Google Play Store is to tap on the disconnect button to make sure that your battery will not get consumed. By tapping on disconnect on any of the phones, it will give you a confirmation and the other phone will notify you. And that's pretty much it. Next, Google Photos. And once more, I'm using my Poco M3 because now on any Android phone, you can get pixel exclusive editing tools if you are subscribed to the Google One membership. So now I'm signed in with my Google One account and here's one of the photos. And when I tap on edit, you will see the same exact advanced or enhanced editing uh, tools here like dynamic for example under adjust you have the same hdr slider and it will also show you the portrait light so let me pick one of the photos to show you how it works so here is one of the selfies i have and when i tap on the edit button wait for a few seconds and you will see portrait and when you tap on portrait it will automatically apply the portrait light and here i can get the circle to change the light myself. Another change related to Google Photos is the new set of collections that you'll automatically find in your memories area. And the first one I have here is called Heart of the City. This one includes all the photos I took in the city as you see here. And there are also a few others that you might see as well like Sand and Sea. And this one is for beach photos out to play and this one is for children and fathers one more called roar of the crowd and this one for sports and finally tasty treats and this one is for desserts and when it comes to the new enhanced video editing tools unfortunately they are not yet available and when i tap on the edit button still i'm not getting these tools but stay tuned i will definitely cover it in my future videos next google search and now there is a new feature called passive ranking. This feature will help you get buried answers from web pages in a much easier way. So for example, I have here a query in Google search. It says, how can I determine if my house windows are UV glass? As you see here, the first paragraph will immediately give you the answer you are looking for. It says here, when, when it's dark, hold a lit match or a lighter close to the glass in your window. And then if you want to continue, you can tap on the link. Previously, you will not get the same actual result. You might get maybe the first paragraph of the web page, but it will not tell you exactly the answer you are looking for. And now when you tap on this link, it will highlight for you the part that appeared in the search result. As you see here, it's highlighted in yellow. And once you start scrolling, the highlight will disappear. So that will make it much easier when you search for something on Google now. Next, Gmail. And now when you swipe for actions, you will get a very subtle haptic feedback around this area, confirming that an action will be taken. One more change related only to the workspace users. Now when they search for a specific email account, the search results will include the account they searched for, plus any email aliases related to this account, which is gonna make it a lot easier to locate certain messages. And you should see now on the screen, the workspace tiers eligible for this new feature. Next, the Apple TV app is now available on Chromecast with Google TV. And here's a video for my Chromecast. And as you see, I have the app available to install. And here are the screenshots. So if you have a TV Plus subscription, now you can enjoy your content on Chromecast with Google TV. Next, YouTube TV. And now when you go to add-ons and then 
scroll down you will see a new bundle called entertainment plus this bundle will give you hbo max showtime and the stars for 29.99 if you're going to purchase each subscription individually, you're going to pay a total of $35. So it's $5 cheaper than individual subscriptions. Next, YouTube Music. And now when you go to Library and then Playlists, you will see the Playlist thumbnail is now made of four different album arts that belongs to the first four songs in your playlist. Previously, the playlist thumbnail was only made of the album art of the first song. So now you have extra three. And that's exactly the case with the web version as well. Next, podcasts. And the now playing screen got some tweaks. In my previous video, I showed you that the sleep button has been moved from the bottom bar to the more settings area. Tapping on it previously will show you a predefined list of choices for the sleep timer but now it has been moved back again to the same bar and also tapping on it will give you the same slider that we used to have before next google maps and now if you are in the us you can pay for your parking from within google maps in 400 different cities across the us this feature works with Park Mobile and Passport. I'm not going to be able to show you the feature on my mobile, but here is an article from 9to5Google that will show you the steps briefly using this GIF. As you see here, you're going to tap on this button. Then it's going to ask you for the parking zone. Once you enter the parking zone, it will ask you for the time. Once you choose the time and hit the pay button, it will launch your Google Pay account and make the payment. One more thing related to Google Maps. In my previous video, I showed you that I wasn't able to pin any location I searched for manually. But now, after digging deeper into the app, I found a way. I searched here for a restaurant and as you see, I have Drive. And when I tap on Drive, the pin icon is now available and I can tap on it to pin this location to my Go tab. Next, Android Auto. And if you have a car that supports Android Auto, now you can create Google Assistant shortcuts and pin these shortcuts to your home screen. These shortcuts will allow you to do multiple actions using a single tap without the need to use your voice. So if you want to know more about the feature, I'm going to leave a link in the description. And the second feature you will get is the ability to set a custom wallpaper for your Android Auto in the car. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the changes I spotted in Google Apps in the second and third weeks of February. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.